Next, I'm going to talk about maintenance and husbandry for the new tank. So every Saturday morning, I will typically walk down these stairs early in the morning to do maintenance on my tanks. And I'll typically spend Saturday doing maintenance on the 187 gallon tank with the lights are out right now. And typically on Sundays, I will do maintenance on the new 225 gallon Peninsula tank. But I don't spend a lot of time in this room doing maintenance because I have this remote sump room with all the equipments in for the most part. I have a calendar that I lean on heavily in terms of all the different um, things that I'm supposed to be doing on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, even a yearly basis. So I have one of these for each of the tanks and this is the sheet for the new tank. So on a weekly basis, I will do a 10% water change on the tank and I've got the whole water change system set up that I talked about in another video. So it really takes me literally, I don't know, five minutes to do a 25 gallon water change. Just flip a couple of these levers around and I can pump the water out relatively easy into this slop sink using this uh, flexible tubing at the end of all the PVC pipe that I had plumbed in here. But before I do that, what I'll typically do is, just as a um, precaution, I'll test the specific gravity in my 55 gallon saltwater makeup drum, just to make sure that it uh, is within the acceptable range. And I usually like to be 1.025 1.026 in terms of specific gravity. I will also measure the, um, I will test for the magnesium in here because this is where I'll dose magnesium in this drum if I need it for the tank. So I do those two things really before I do anything. And what I will also do is clean the skimmer cup. So I'll take the skimmer cup off and just wipe it down, empty the, uh, the cup in the slop sink, use paper towels, and what have you. And once that is all set, I'll take off all these lids on the dream box here, remove all the lids, and what, why I'm doing that is you know, kind of getting ready to shut it down. And as you can probably see, there is some detritus in the sump. So once I'm ready to rock and roll, I shut all the pumps down, bring them down to zero. I shut all the other equipment off. I will pull out the filter socks and I will take all 10 of these filter socks out, bring them in a bucket. Real easy to have this short garden hose that I hook up to the slop sink and I'll just blast them with hot water. It cleans them off real easily. They're, they're nylon, they're not um, fabric, so they're pretty easy to, uh, to clean. So I'll pull all the filter socks out, take all the lids off, and I will siphon to get all the detritus out of the dream box here because detritus is not a good thing, right, to have. It can help the uh, nutrients build up and you don't want the excess nutrients. At one point in time, I had been also siphoning out the detritus on the bare bottom tank here. But with the new flow that I got going, with the new MP60s that I added on top of the two MP40s, I really haven't had a need. There's not really a lot of detritus that's collected on the bottom since I made that switch. So I might do that again in the future, but 
recently it hasn't been necessary. So everything is shut down. I take all the detritus out. And then I will take 25 gallons out of the sump typically. Try to do a 10% water change. And then I will um, put the new makeup water back in once I know that the specific gravity and the magnesium levels are where I'm at. And again, it's just a matter of turning a couple of valves here and here, and it'll all go back in via this PVC plumbing that I got set up underneath the bench here and into the dream box. So that's the weekly water changes. The other thing that I will do is I have Kalkwasser dripping in 24-7 probably tough to see this but you know there could be some precipitate at the end of the uh, quarter inch tubing right here so I'll always take a toothbrush and make sure that that is clean so it's not clogged you don't want to have that stuff clogged and the other thing that I will do is I will also I'm I'm dosing a little nitrate not a lot in fact I think right now I'm not dosing any because my nitrates are um, in the 25 part per million range for that tank. But what, uh, what I do uh, also is um, for the line that is going in for the nitrate, I will clean, I think it's back here, I will clean that quarter inch tubing as well. So I'll, uh, I'll clean those dosing lines. The, the other stuff that I will do on a weekly basis is I will clean the, the top of these lids on the dream box just to make sure all the salt creep and what have you that you can see right here is off of them. I will also clean the lenses on the Mitra's fixtures to make sure again there's no salt that's splashed on the lenses. I don't want to have any, I don't want to have that impacting the PAR. I will also clean the top of the Euro bracing on the tank, again, eliminating salt creep. I will even clean this lid, which is nice to have on this tank, and it kind of really cuts back on the noise. The, uh, the other thing that I do on a weekly basis is I will also, once I have this arid algae reactor up and running all the time, right now I've got water pumping through it. I don't have the light on, but I might turn it on since my nitrates are a little bit high. But what I will do once that is running is I will clean that out every week just to make sure that the, that the Kato doesn't have any biofilm on it and that the, um, the insides of the reactor are clean and, and can perform the way it's supposed to be performing. Okay, so I am running activated carbon on this tank. So every three weeks, I will remove this reactor. And, and the cool thing is that it can unscrew. It's screwed into the bottom of the dream box. Makes it really easy, nice and clean. Real simple to swap out the media there. As I mentioned, I'm dripping uh, caulk washer into this tank. So every four weeks or so, I will refresh the caulk washer and I'll clean out this reactor. Make sure all the tubing is, is clean and I'm not going to clog. Okay, another really important piece of preventative maintenance that I do is, well, I will clean all my pumps, including these recirculating pumps. So I will, every three months, take the wet sides of these MP60s and MP40s off, and I will soak them in a mixture of white vinegar and fresh water. It's, it's one part vinegar, one part fresh water, and I'll let them soak for 30 minutes. I will also clean my return pumps. Now I have two return pumps, you know, in the dream box here. But again, it's really important. What I do is I will power them down, disassemble them, take the entire pump into uh, that mixture of one part vinegar, one part water, and soak that pump, the impeller, and all the other parts just to make sure that there's nothing in there that could uh, cause that pump to seize up at some point down the road. And again, preventative maintenance is so, so important. You just don't want to have a pump to break down because you have not been staying on top of the maintenance. I will also do maintenance 
on the uh, on the skimmer pump. See back here, it's kind of hard to see around. And I will also do maintenance on the pump that feeds the arid algae reactor. And again, I do these every three months just to make sure there's no issues. So another very important piece of maintenance that I do is replace the cartridges in my SpectrePure Auto DI unit. So I share the 225 gallon tank, I share this unit with my 187 gallon tank. So it, it produces the RDI water in this 55 gallon drum. And I'll swap out these cartridges every five months, maybe even sooner than that. It's just important. I don't, I don't want to have the um, potential issue of problematic algae propping up. So by keeping these cartridges fresh, keeps that water purified. And every, I don't know, two to three years, I'll replace the membranes. So every three weeks, I will calibrate the pH probes. I have two pH probes on the Proflux 4 controller. I have one that reads the pH just for the tank itself. And then I have a, another pH probe that is in the top of this Reef Octopus calcium reactor here. So I will do the, uh, the calibrations for those pH probes and I will also re do a, um, a calibration for the pH probe on the KH director just to make sure everything is reading correctly. Every now and then I will also do a calibration on the conductivity probe on the Proflux 4. Okay, so now here is a really important thing that I will do typically every two months, and I can't stress how important this is. Peristaltic pumps like this underneath the, uh, the cage director and, and also this doser underneath the Proflux 4, the, the peristaltic dosing heads need regular maintenance because if they get dirt in there in terms of the, uh, the rollers or on the tubing or on the shaft, then that can impact the performance. And the last thing you want to have happen is for the doser not to be dosing what it's supposed to be dosing. So I really am very religious about that. Now, one thing I keep handy in case I need them, and I do have a lot of these things, are these GHL dosing maintenance kits. So they've got spare rollers and covers and what have you. And it's just good to have these things on hand, even uh, spare tubing if you need it. But I really, really try to stay on top of this stuff because I don't want my, you know, my dosing heads to perform, not perform the way they're supposed to be forming. And what I also do after I do the maintenance is I recalibrate the dosing heads just to make sure that, again, they are dosing what they're supposed to be doing. So that, that is a really critical piece of maintenance that I do every couple of months. I will also make sure that all the probes are clean when I'm doing the calibrations. So when I'm doing the pH calibrations and when I'm doing the conductivity calibrations, I will make sure that all the, uh, there's mainly it's um, carbonate precipitate that can impact or get on the, um, the sensors on these probes. So I just make sure I clean them off on a regular basis when I do those calibrations. And one last thing about the probes, the pH probe, typically that needs to be replaced once a year. The conductivity probe can last uh, a couple of years, so it just kind of depends on the performance. And I think the temperature probe can last a pretty long time too. Again, it's just something you got to keep an eye on if, if they start looking, um, if they start kind of giving some measurements that are not in line with what you've been getting before, then I think it's time for them to be replaced. So the final thing I will do in my weekly maintenance is test my key water parameters. And I mentioned this a couple of videos ago, but I use the Proflux 4 to constantly monitor the pH, the temperature, and the conductivity. And I also have the KH director to constantly monitor the DKH. I will use these uh, solid for test kits to measure magnesium, nitrate, and calcium. I cannot wait until the ion director comes hopefully soon, and I will utilize that to measure the magnesium, nitrate, and calcium. Those are really the regular parameters that I will you know, record and, and look at and adjust dosing accordingly. I dose 
like I mentioned, a little nitrate. Right now, currently none. And also for the uh, magnesium, if I need to, I will, like I mentioned before, dose in the salt water makeup bin, but I will also dose directly to the tank if needed. But usually what I try to do is keep this at around 1400. And for nitrates, I think I mentioned my nitrates are currently at 25 parts per million. That's, that's kind of high for me. I like to have them in the five to 10 part per million range. For phosphate, I will also measure those once a week. And I use this uh, Milwaukee test kit, pretty, pretty accurate, I think. So I, I do that and you know I try to shoot to have my phosphates in that 0.05 to 0.1 range. And, and I think I, I forgot to mention calcium. I like to have that in the 400 to 440 part per million range and magnesium. Can't remember if I, if I mentioned that, but I like to have that in the 1400 to 1440 range. And one last thing I want to talk about here is just really daily observation of the tank. With the 187 gallon tank, you know, I look at my corals. I look at my corals really closely. I try to do that every day. I've got a couple corals in that tank that act like canaries in the coal mine. So they're really good indicators of some trouble that could be popping up that I can't see in a, uh, in a test kit or through the, um, the KHD. So in that instance, if I see something that's looking a little weird, I'll order an ICP test to dig a little bit deeper to see if there are any issues that are uh, potentially popping up. So I think that I just want to mention that observation, looking at your tank is really, really important. And I plan to do that with this new tank as well. Well, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. One last thing, if you were looking to add some equipment, I do sell GHL, Pax Bellum, and Royal Exclusive products, as well as Reef Octopus Calcium and Calc Reactors, which is the equipment I use and recommend, so I will put a link in the video description below. And if you need help with a new tank build, including help designing a custom aquarium, or help reconfiguring your current setup, then feel free to reach out to me. I will put an additional link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.